Hey guys, Sarah here from Six and Flow, and today I wanted to go over the lead object within HubSpot. So before I dive in, I just want to set a little preface about deal pipelines and how it ties into the lead object. So within Six and Flow strategy process, we always say to our clients that when you're setting up your pipeline stages, if there are any actions or within the stage that can be skipped, it should not be a deal stage. Um, what it should be is within your lead object. So for example, if you need to send out different sequences, that isn't a pipeline stage. Because if it was, it would set an unrealistic view of your sales process. Your goal is to reduce the amount of stages that you have to show the macro aspects of your process. If something is an opportunity, you shouldn't put that in your deal pipeline straight away because it inflates your initial stages of your pipeline and it can make your conversion rates look poor throughout the funnel. To get better reporting, you need to have fewer deal stages and only bring deals into your pipeline when they become a deal or an actual opportunity, not before. So before this prospecting workspace, this was achieved through lifecycle stages and lead statuses. The prospecting tool gives you an area for your salespeople to focus their daily activities on. You can see tasks in progress, overdue, meetings, a schedule, what your sequences are looking like, and if you have any new leads um, that have been assigned. It's great for productivity because it limits the view and offers a home base. So on to the actual lead object it's, itself within the prospecting tool. So one thing that I really love about the lead object is that sometimes when a rep is looking to engage with a company, they won't know who the right contact is at that company. So the prospecting tool allows you to create a company as a lead, and once you find who the decision maker is, you can then add them in as a contact. You can set up stages in the lead object um, and set up a pre-sales pipeline stage where you can prospect without having full details um, or having to create a deal. So to do that, you would jump over to settings and you get brought up to this um, setup page. If we head over to pipeline and then configure, what you'll want to do is map your pre-sales pipeline. So what are the stages? What would you call them? Um, what makes sense for your sales process? You can then assign um, conditional properties. So for example, if a lead has reached new, you might want the lead label to be created um, and the lead owner to be assigned. So you might set that as required. HubSpot also offers within the qualified stage that you require a deal to be created. So if a lead is qualified, a user must create a deal. So again, you're seeing how standardization is now um, enforced throughout your entire rep, well, throughout your entire sales team and across every rep. If you then head over to the Automate tab, HubSpot offers a few different templated automations, which are great. Um, a lead can automatically be created um, if a lifecycle stage has been hit. So how are leads populated into your lead object uh, workspace? You can set a um, life cycle stage, and now we recommend only choosing one. As soon as you have multiple life cycle stages set, every single time that contact reaches that new life cycle stage, or that new threshold, they'll be re-entered into your lead object so it can create clutter um, and duplicate data. So instead, what you want to do is, again, think back to your sales or your customer journey. At what point do they want to engage with um, your sales team? In this case, let's just set it as a marketing qualified lead and save. <laughs> The other templated one is um, if a disqualification reason is bad timing or budget restraints, you can automatically set up a task for that lead to be followed up with in a certain amount of time. Now within settings, you can also create workflows from scratch directly within um, this interface, or you can um, do, one, do it within the actual workflows tool as well. Some ones that we love are starting from right to left. Um, when a lead reaches disqualified, um, make sure that your rep sets its qualification status to qualified out. Again, just cleaner data, you're making it structured and you're standardizing it. If a lead reaches qualified, to create a deal um, and set the deal name to, for example, um, a lead can automatically be created um, if a lifecycle stage has been hit. So how are leads populated into your lead object uh, workspace? You can set a um, life cycle stage, and now we recommend only choosing one. As soon as you have multiple life cycle stages set, every single time that contact reaches that new life, the um, primary associated name. So if I worked at Six and Flow, Six and Flow, and then you might also choose to, for example, add in the pipeline stage. Um, so then again, it's standardized and set all throughout your uh, pipeline. Another one, for example, is when a lead reaches connected and they've been in your pipeline um, for some time now and 
sales just hasn't reached out. They've sort of gone silent. What you could do is set up a thresh or set up a filter where if they've been in your lead without um, the next activity scheduled or the last activity hasn't happened in two weeks, set up a task notification to re-engage with that lead. Now we'll just jump back over to the prospecting workspace. You can set labels, hot, warm, and cold, um, and you can also automate this in your lead score, and we'll get into that in a second. Some filters, um, you can refine by filter, so if you're only looking for new ones that have been come through, um, in my case, I don't have many leads assigned to me, but if you're a BDR or rep did, if they are enrolled or not enrolled in a sequence, if they're a target account, and so forth. So I mentioned how you can connect um, these lead labels to your lead score. So if you have a lead score and a contact reaches a certain threshold, you might want um, the lead label to automatically populate as hot, warm, and cold. And you can do that through automations. Um, we at Six and Flow have three different scores. We have a fit score, an engagement score, and a relationship score. All of those then um, are grouped together to give an overall score. The three of those then are built into a workflow where then, um, again, if a certain threshold is hit, that label is automatically assigned to being hot, warm, or cold. So these are some best practices and just an overview of how to use the lead object. I hope you found it helpful and let us know if you have any questions.